get out of here! Hello people, have a get for you today on how to increase the FPS in Planet Side 2. This is for those of you who wish to gain as many frames as possible and is not aimed at making the game look pretty. I'm going to split the video into two parts. The first part will be things that you can change easily and may reward you with more frames per second. And the second part will be on more technical solutions to do with your PC hardware. Firstly, these are the things which everyone can easily change now and should help you with your FPS. The first thing that you're going to want to do is update your graphics drivers. Now I'm using an AMD card, so this is uh, the AMD interface, uh, Radeon Settings, so you want to type in, in here, AMD Radeon Settings, select it and this will come up, and then I see I've got an update here, and then I can install this new update. Now I don't want to install this because this is an optional one and I actually prefer this one, but for you, you should update your driver to the, the latest recommended. On If you're on GeForce, the equivalent to the AMD Radeon settings is the GeForce Experience. So type down here GeForce Experience, click the result, and then update. Make sure your driver is up to date on there. Okay, secondly, now Planetside is a heavily CPU dependent game. So the more free CPU that you have, the more frames you're likely to get. So in order to free up a slightly more CPU power, you can go into your task manager and you can go on to startup and you can disable all the things that you don't need to start up every single time you want your computer startup and this will give you more free CPU since you're not running these in the background and also has the added benefit of making your PC startup slightly quicker as well so I recommend this not only for Planetside but also just in general just to disable all the things you don't need um, also make sure you've got Steam disabled only launch that manually by clicking it don't start it every single time you start the game every single time you start your computer and the, the reason for this I'm going to tell you next now the reason why I told you to disable steam is because you can actually launch Planetside without steam running in the background that means because steam isn't running in the background it's not using any CPU and it's not using any memory so you can gain a couple of frames now the way you do this is you go to this folder so you type in uh, this PC, click that. If you're on Windows 7, you just go to My PC and then your local C disk. And then you go to Program Files 86. Then you go to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. And inside of there, you'll find a folder that says Planetside 2. Now, you just drag that onto your desktop if you want or into another folder outside of Steam. For, for ease of access, I've put mine onto an SSD. So I drag the plan state folder from here onto my SSD. And then once you've done that, you want to go onto the plan site 2 folder, scroll down, find the, uh, the launch pad shortcut, and drag that onto your taskbar down at the bottom here. And that means because your plan site folder is outside of Steam now, you can launch the game without Steam even running. And this will get you a few frames. Okay, next, you want to launch up the game. When you're on the menu, you want to go down to settings. Once you're in settings, you want to make sure you're on full screen, not full screen windowed. You want uh, your native resolution. For me, it's 1920 by 1080. For your render quality, it's 100%. Brightness, whatever you're comfortable with in your vertical field of view, whatever you're com comfortable with. Um, leave this, this one unchecked. Leave this one unchecked. You don't want VSync on because that limits you to 60 FPS or whatever your screen refresh rate is. Now if you're an infantry only player, meaning that you don't take part in any vehicles or air game or anything like that, you can put this render distance down to 500. If you're a vehicle player, I recommend you put this up to around 1000 and if you fly air, maybe uh, up to 2000. But um, these are the bare minimums that you can get away with in terms of acceptable uh, render distance for those those playstyles. Make sure you have smoothing, fog, ambient occlusion off, bloom off, motion blur off. You want to go on custom quality, you want everything on low. You want graphics quality low, uh, light and low, shadows low, effects low, 
low, low, low, all the way down. The only one I recommend leaving on high is the texture quality because this doesn't have very much of an impact on your frames and it actually makes the game look not like a complete trash. So if you just copy the settings that I have here, you should be good to go. I recommend now that you go on ahead and launch the game and see if you've had any kind of performance increase. If you're not happy with your results, come back and watch the second part of the video which I'm about to show. Okay, on to part two, the more technical part of the video. Now once you've completed all of the initial steps, you want to bring yourself into the VR training and move yourself away from everyone who's fighting over here and shooting the targets. Just get yourself into the middle of nowhere. Hold down ALT and press F and in the bottom left hand corner it'll show you your frames per second inside of Planet 2. So right now I'm getting around 130 ish, 120 ish. At the same time that you're doing this you want to launch up Task Manager in the background and have it running. What you want to do is just come into the game once the Task Manager is running and just hang about for 10 seconds. So I've been st standing here doing nothing for 10 seconds so once that 10 seconds is up you want to tab out, go into your task manager on the performance you can see that my CPU has been completely maxed out and my GPU hasn't been completely maxed out so that means my system is bottlenecked by my CPU so if I wanted to get more frames I would have to either purchase a better CPU or overclock the one I have. Now 9 times out of 10 Planet Aid is bottlenecked by CPU it's one of the most CPU restricted heavy games I've ever come across. What this means is after you've done the little test that I've just shown you how to do if you're bottlenecked by your CPU and your FPS in the VR training is very low you have two choices you can either overclock your CPU which I actually recommend anyway but it can be quite difficult to do I'm not gonna teach you how to do it in this video because it's it's a lot more um, technical than that um, or you can purchase a new CPU now the overclocking shouldn't cost you anything so sh you should probably give that a go but if you really really want more FPS you need to buy a new CPU now when it comes to planet aid it's more about single core performance so what that means is your CPU will either have usually two, four or eight cores, sometimes six cores. And it doesn't matter about the, the total strength of your CPU, all it matters is the single core performance. So you need at least four cores and you want each of those four cores to be as strong as possible. Okay, so if you've come to the conclusion that you need a new CPU, what you can do to find out which CPUs your motherboard accepts, you can go to your start menu here and type in DX, D I A G, and run that. It'll come up with a, um, a box asking you to click OK in a second. I've already clicked OK, but for you it, it'll come up a box, click yes or OK what comes up, and then this will come up. It's a diagnostic tool. It tells you here that this is my processor here. It's an Intel, Intel i5-7600K. And then I can go into Google and Google will tell me what type of socket that is. So if I go i5-7600K, it'll tell me the chip type, the yeah, socket type here, look, socket type, socket LGA. So that's the, um, the socket type you need to be searching for when you look for a new CPU. And so once you've figured out what type of socket of CPU you need, you can go onto this website here which is cpubenchmark.net and the reason before that I said you need at least four cores is because Planetside as far as I'm aware it only runs on four cores, it won't if you have eight cores it won't utilize the four of those cores so you want four cores and you want the highest possible single thread rating so this is the CPU I currently have. Its total score is actually lower than this, this CPU here. This CPU has eight cores and my CPU only has four cores. And the eight core has a higher 
performance because it has more cores. But in plan say this doesn't matter because plan say won't use all cores, it'll only use four. So as you can see I want as you can see, even though this is a more powerful CPU, its single thread rating is two three four eight. Whereas the single thread rating on my CPU is two three eight four, which is higher. So I'll be getting four cores at this performance versus four cores on an eight core CPU at this performance. So even though this is a better CPU for, for 9 out of 10 applications, for Planetside this one's actually better. So if you're seriously, all you care about is Planetside, you want the highest single thread rating 4 core CPU you can get for your socket type. Now if for some reason you weren't bottlenecked by your CPU and you are bottlenecked by your GPU, which is your graphics card, you can either you can actually overclock your graphics card, but I've never done this, and I don't know if it's a good thing to do. But I recommend if you're bottlenecked by your GPU, you should just get a new GPU because it'll help you in all games. And um, you can go on the the application I told you earlier, which was DX DIAG, and then once that loads up, it'll tell you what your current um, graphics card is. If you click on Display, see here I've got a AMD R9 200 series. Um, I actually know mine's R9 270X. <coughs> so I can go on this website, which is videocardbenchmark.net, find my graphics card, which is here, the R9 270X. This is its performance rating. So basically, any card above this in the list pretty much is a, um, a better card. If you're going to buy a new card, you may as well not just get the one directly above it, you may as well go a fair way up and try and get something that's about twice as good. If you're going to spend the money, you may as well get something that's worth the money. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this guide useful. If you did, please let me know because I, I feel like making a, a few more instructional guides. Um, I apologize for the poor microphone quality. This is just the microphone that I have. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll Catch you on the next video.